Welcome to our second episode of The Investor and the Amateur. We hope you're liking it so far. I'm Tracy and I am the amateur learning from Steve over here, the investor. (laughs) It's what Tracy calls me is the investor, but I too am learning with you guys. So, but quick, quick disclaimer for all of you. Uh, This isn't investing advice. This is for educational purposes only. So if we talk about specific stocks, specific positions, that's with our own research and due diligence, and it may not be right for you. So just putting that disclaimer out there so we don't get in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're learning a lot of uh, things that we need to include and feedback from you guys. So some other housekeeping items are um, that, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So you can use these strategies really with like any amount of money. We didn't want it to come across that you need 50 K uh, to be able to use the strategy Steve talks about. That's why he's, his strategies are awesome because you can have start with $200 like this, the story he shared in the intro and then turn that into uh, more money. Right. So you don't need to have 50 K. We wanted to make sure that we said that. And then the other thing is we're going to start putting the date of when we record We've had a little lag in releasing from recording, and we're going to tighten up those that time frame. Um, so it's releasing quicker, but we still wanted to say the date and time so that when we do talk about stocks and the market, it will make sense uh, given the context of the date. So today is September 28th, 2021, obviously, and it's around 1230 Mountain Time. So that's the, the information we're going to be using in this podcast today to talk about where the market is and where uh, my picks are at. And... The market today, it's a red day, meaning it's not good if you've got uh, positions, long positions, which maybe I should explain that a little bit of lingo, a little side lesson here. (laughs) You can be long or short a stock or a position. Being long means that you want it to go up. Being short means you want it to go down and you'll profit if it goes down. So just remember long, short. So if I say, we're long, if you remember last time we bought at and in Tracy's account. So we would be long at and That makes you sound cool when you're talking to people like, yeah, I'm long at and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Real cool, real cool. Um, you'll learn that, th- I feel like this is a little psychological trick Stephen uses, or maybe it's all investors, but the language he uses is extremely optimistic and not the language I would use to describe things a lot. For example, in the first episode we released last time, Stephen, what was the word you would use? Um, instead of crash, which is the word I would use, I think you used correction. Yeah. The, the market made a, a correction. minor correction. <laughs> which is almost a positive thing in a way. It almost corrected itself, you know, it was too, you gotta keep too high. It needed to correct. Positive. <laughs> positive also, yeah. Results in positive numbers, hopefully. Positive <laughs> investment results. <laughs> He'll also use the term floor a lot with me as we've talked about Bitcoin. <laughs> and uh, oh. As I've said, Steve, it looks like it busted through that floor and kept going down to the depths of hell. Then he'll say, no, it's just a bed, Tracy. A bed a mattress. has springs, a mattress. A mattress. It's, it's, we'll talk about floors and ceilings <laughs> sometime in this podcast. Uh, you're right. I'm getting carried away, but I just, I pick up on these little words Steve uses uh, just like it's a, it's a red day. No, <laughs> maybe, it's a maybe horrible, I'll, horrible I'll, day. Maybe I'll show you uh different floors and ceilings for AT&T we could maybe even look at the chart and we oh, can even giddy up uh, all right so <laughs> do you want to talk about uh our AT&T position first yeah so that's the stock we bought at the end of our last podcast right before the closing bell and we bought it at $26.97 how many shares do you remember how many shares we bought we bought 50 50 shares okay yep. Now that I, I think on the last podcast, I made a mistake and I said it only costs us 900. No, it costs us whatever 50 times 20, 27 roughly is. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I have to do the math. Um, so remember in school when they said, you will have to use this math later in life, I guess. Yeah. It costs us about, right. about $1,348.50. Yeah. 
Okay. So about 1350. So it costs us $1,350 for those 50 shares. Okay. Now the reason honestly that I bought shares instead of an option, which we'll talk about, because normally I would just buy an option on AT&T, especially because options for AT&T are among the cheapest. Uh, how do I say this? So options are priced based on how volatile a stock is. So if you have a stock that doesn't move a ton mm -hmm. up and down, you can buy options cheaper than a stock that goes up and down, like has huge wild swings. Because there's less risk. Yeah, because it's, um, and we'll get into it, but it's okay. less likely that it will, um, well, the person who's selling you the option contract, these are contracts and we'll get into that in just a second. Person, somebody always has to sell you an option if you're buying an option. So there's always two sides of the market, right? So whenever I buy an option, I'm buying it from somebody who's selling that to me. Mm -hmm. And in order to sell an option, you have to own shares. Um, so you, they would have to own at least 100 shares of stock in AT&T to sell me an option. And that's because when they're selling me a call option, for example, and don't worry if you're thinking this is like a bunch of lingo, I don't, I don't understand. There's two types of options, calls and puts. I'm gonna talk about calls mostly today. Uh, a call option is a type of option where you are, just think about it as buying upside. You are buying a contract that gives you upside above a certain price uh, until a certain expiration date. So they don't last, these contracts are limited in time. And so the person who sells me that call option, they're basically selling me upside. I'm buying the upside, they're selling me their upside. So they, let's say they bought hundred shares of at and at $27. And I wanted to buy a $30 call option. That means I am buying the upside above $30. And that person is selling the upside above $30, $30. So if the stock is not very volatile, that seller might sell it to me for pretty cheap because he's like, it's at 27. I'll sell you a one month contract, option contract. Um, so it means like you have 30 days. Uh, if the stock doesn't go above 30, you make zero and I get a pocket, whatever you paid me for the option, which is called the premium. So maybe he sells me that $30 call option for like, I don't know, 15 bucks for the next 30 days, because he's like the likelihood of AT&T going from 27 to 30, that's a 10% move, more than a 10% move. That's very small. So like, I'm happy collecting 15 bucks from you because I don't think, I, I think I'm, my, my shares are not going to go above 30 and therefore I won't lose them. If they were to go above 30, what I would do is I would say, hey, here's my contract that you sold me. I'm turning this in and I'm calling in those. That's why I call it a call option. They're saying I'm calling in those shares, meaning you have to sell me your shares at 30 because I have this contract says you will sell it to me at 30. And um, let's say it was at 31. I could then immediately turn around and sell it for $31 and pocket that $1 per share difference. Um, and contracts, like I said, are always for hundred shares. So that would be a hundred dollar profit. We'll get into this. Sometimes it's yeah. hard to, to understand without seeing it visually. So if you're listening on the podcast, then just try and paint a picture in your mind <laughs> or go watch the YouTube version later. Um, so that's a brief introduction on call options. We will get into the weeds more in future episodes. This isn't something that you learn just hearing about it once, like you need to actually kind of get hands-on and get in there yourself and go through the exercise of buying one of these options to really understand it. Um, okay, so going back to, and feel free to interrupt me, Tracy, whenever, if you have a thought, but going back to AT&T, so we bought 50 shares for $1,350, right? Since then, what I did is I bought two options. Um, I bought one the other day and I bought another one today um, when AT&T was around 2720. So does that mean um, you bought a, a, for 100 shares? Yeah, each contract represents 
the right to the upside for 100 shares each call. Oh, uh, right. Okay. okay. We'll talk about put options later. Put options is basically you're buying insurance or you're buying downside. You can think of it either, either way, same thing. You're either buying insurance on your stock, maybe you already own stock and you just want to buy insurance to protect its downside, or you don't even have any stock and you're just wanting to buy exposure to the downside. Gotcha. By a put, but we're only talking about calls. So let, um, <clears throat> Real quick, me... though, before we move on to the option buys of AT&T, yeah. as of right now, AT&T is trading at $27.30. So I am up 33 cents 30 a cents share. On 50 shares, which... <laughs> on, a re- on a red day. You have to do the math. Yeah, <laughs> which is good. I mean, so a lot of times when you see a stock that's holding up, that's like actually maybe up or only you know flat on a, on a big red day where most of the market's down, That's somewhat of a good sign because it kind of means to bring in this terminology that Tracy loves. Maybe there's a floor (laughs) that it's very near and it's just not going below the floor. Like this $27 level in AT&T, I think is a pretty good floor. It's repeatedly gone to 27 and it's just like the market cannot push it down. Mm. Meaning there's a lot of buyers who are like, if it gets down 27, I'll buy some. Right, that's what a lot of people are doing in the market. So AT and T must be a, a firm mattress, but when we're talking firm Bitcoin, mattress, there we've de- we've determined it's a waterbed that we're dealing with. <laughs> yes, with Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a waterbed for a floor, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there may be multiple waterbeds that you might push through. Oh boy. If you guys are wondering why I keep bringing up Bitcoin, by the way, it's not necessarily because I'm a big fan of Bitcoin. It's because Stephen. Talked me into buying it. And we'll probably do a whole podcast later on cryptocurrency and, and those investments. But it's oh. my it's my one big investment before this. And so I just have to give Steve crap as much as possible on that one. Yeah. Even though I still am up. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right. Just kidding. So what what's yeah, tell me about the options you bought then on at and Okay. So let me I'm gonna share my handy dandy whiteboard. <laughs> like blues clues, handy dandy. I was gonna notebook. say who says that? <laughs> Steve from Blue's. Isn't his name Steve? Too? Oh, so all right. This AT and T, right? Uh, I don't know how to draw an ampersand. How do you draw one? <laughs> if you're listening to this, know. just switch over to YouTube okay. for that one part. It's worth it. Um, I, I'm trying to imagine an ampersand in my head because that's part of the AT and T logo, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> So at t which ticker symbol, ticker symbol means the symbol, the stock symbol that you would put in to look it up in like a, an app like Robinhood is just T. So at and has got a cool yeah. ticker symbol. It's just T, the letter T. All right. So we bought 50 shares, like we said. So that gives us 50 shares of upside exposure, right? Mm-hmm. And downside exposure. Mm-hmm. Um. But I bought an option, which is a, a call option. So it's a contract for upside above a certain price, which is called the strike price. And I'm drawing on the whiteboard while I do this. That's why there's a little bit of pause. It's talking so slow. Yeah. And real quick, and I could be the only one with this question, but upside meaning you think it's going to go up above yeah. whatever strike price. Yeah. So you're Correct. buying exposure. When you're buying a call option, you're buying exposure to the upside. Yeah. I um, mean, you profit if the stock goes above your strike price, which in okay. this case, I bought a $23 oh, nice. call option. So $23 strike price. So Tracy, based on what I said before, yeah, that means you have exposure above what price? $23. Yeah, you have positive exposure above $23. Um, it's a little bit more nuanced than this because technically, even if it's above $23, you could lose money because uh, you have to pay us fee for this option, right? The premium, right? So what's my premium fee? Well, the further out in time you go, the more expensive your option will be. Oh, okay. So let's see the expiration date. Let me erase this E. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. So the ex- expiration date 
is January 23rd, 2023. What? Let that sink so you're, in. So, you're going to have me have anxiety for over a year. <laughs> well, so we can sell this call option at any time. That's the beauty of call options oh, or any option. Just buy that date. If it's at $20, we have it's lost a day for me. Yeah. Okay. But, but I could extend way above all the $23. Way to that. Yeah. It's okay. way above $23, which is more than a year from now, right? You've got like a year and three months or so. Um, let's say it goes to like $40. You'll be very grateful that we did this. But why would you not? So if it's already at 27 a share. Yeah. Why would you not just do like a month contract that's cheaper? I could, um, but Why did you decide to go with the longer term. Number one, you've got transaction costs every time you buy an option. I mean, the fees these days, which if you're coming into this, this is the prime time because only this last year have brokerages really reduced the fees for options. So every time you used to buy and sell it would call, cost you like 10 bucks plus 65 cents an option. So each transaction would be like almost $11. Then a couple of years ago, a lot of people slashed their fees to like $5 plus plus the 65 cents. Now it has no base fee. You just pay 65 cents a contract. So it only costs us 65 cents. So you went with the long-term to save 65 cents? <laughs> I just, I just, he's uh, the most frugal yeah. individual I've ever known, by the way. It's not the only reason. Okay. Um, it's just, it's just so we can set it and forget it. Right. Like we don't have to worry about you like, just, oh, okay. Op- okay. because as you approach expiration, um, your option, if, if your option is out of the money, meaning your option strike price Mm-hmm. is above where the stock price is trading. So let's say it was trading at $20. So our $23 call option is above that. So it's out of the money. They call that out of the money. Yeah. Then you your value of the option is purely time premium. Like there's no what you call intrinsic value. You The only value your option has is because maybe in you know the next three months if there's three months left on that option maybe it could get back up to 23 and above but intrinsically when the stock's at 20 your 23 dollar call option is worthless right Mm -hmm. like why would anybody pay the right to buy it at 23 when the stock's trading at 20 20. yeah you know so the only reason somebody would buy that is with the hope that it's going to shoot up in the next three months and so that hope is still worth something that, that we call time value. So every option that you buy has a component of time value. I'm drawing this on the board and a component of, maybe I'll put this in green, intrinsic value. So if the stock was trading at 20, then you would have zero um, intrinsic value and all be time value. If it's trading at 25, mm-hmm. then you would have $2 of intrinsic value because it's $2 above 23. And you'd probably also have some time value if you had time left on that, um, before that option expires, but we'll, we'll get into the real specifics here. So, um, now how much did I pay for that option? How much was the premium? Do you want to venture a guess, Tracy? So I'm I kidding. literally have no idea. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what would sound absurd or not. Uh, so like we pay- For a hundred shares to be able to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So it's trading at $27 now, right? Right. I feel like this and- is expensive. <laughs> So it's in the money. That's called in the money because yeah. the strike price is below that. So it's got intrinsic value. It's going to have at least, if it's stock trading at 27, it's going to have at least $4 per share of intrinsic value. Right. So I would guess it's at least $400. Okay. 
it should cost us, right? I see, because you would take a hundred times the four dollar difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we have so much time, so that time is worth something. So we have time for this to move up. So there's some time value. So I actually paid. $4 and 30 cents, but that's per share okay. that times it by a hundred, right? Cause you've got to buy 430 bucks. shares. So I paid $430. Okay. All right. And that gives me a hundred shares worth of exposure above 23. Okay. Which is pretty cool because for 50 shares, when we we're just buying the shares outright, we spent 1,350. So for roughly a third of the cost, I got you a hundred shares of exposure above 23. So let me just think this out loud. So if come January 23rd, 2023, um, I, AT&T's at 40 bucks and I, I call in <laughs> my option. Yeah. So it, it's 17, that would be $17 above the strike price. Yep. So I would do, I could call that in and essentially make 17 times 100. Yep. Which is what? So yeah, at, at $40. So if the stock's at, this is an at symbol, $40 at expiration yeah. you know, a year from now. Yeah. You're right. You would take, you'd minus your strike price of 23. That's $17 a share of upside profit, essentially. Profit. <laughs> right. Which times a hundred is. 1700 so one thousand seven hundred dollar. But, but then I take away what I already paid. Yeah, it. you spent. Let's do this in red. You spent four hundred and thirty. Yeah. So doing the math here. One thousand two hundred seventy. One thousand two hundred seventy dollar profit, which on a percentage basis, relating back to what you paid this right okay. that's like uh 200 percent plus profit so now just real quick in comparison to just buying the stock out right yeah. i bought it at 20 it's like call it 27 it's very close to 27 dollars a share it goes up to 40 that's a 13 dollar profit and how many shares 50 shares did i buy so what's the yeah What's the profit off of that? Let's do that math real quick. Let's so see. twenty-seven dollars. Uh, so thirteen dollars a share. Twenty-seven. Well, so you, it's at forty in the future is what we're saying. Right. right? Bought at twenty-seven, so that's still seven or thirteen dollars. Yeah, and I got profit. fifty shares, so that'd be six hundred and fifty, right? The six hundred fifty. So yeah, yeah you make a six hundred fifty dollar profit, but that's off of you spent. 1,350 for those shares, wow. right? Okay. So it's still a good profit, but that's only like a 50% profit. Okay. I'm into the options. It's like 200%. Yeah. This is like 50% profit on the shares, right? Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that's that's the power of options. And on at and they're super cheap. Um, when it's not volatile, that time value doesn't cost you much. Mm. That's another reason I was like, mm, just go out a year because, um, I'm really not paying much time value at all. In fact, when I bought it, the stock was trading not at 27, it was trading at 2720. Mm. So really the intrinsic value was 420. Yeah. I bought it for 430. So I really only paid $10 for time. Gotcha. The rest was intrinsic. Gotcha. Anyway, all right. So, and I bought two of those, by the way, because I bought one the other day. And then coincidentally today, I bought another one for 430 as well. Same price. Same price. So the stock was at about the same all price. All right, AT&T. So right now you have like uh, $250 of exposure or 250 shares worth of exposure on AT&T um, above- Gosh, T-Mobile or something, dang it. Everyone switch to AT&T. <laughs> now, did you want to talk briefly about, and I don't know, where are we on time? Uh, that's a good question. 
we are trying to promise you guys shorter podcasts, so we want to keep this under 40 minutes. Um, all okay. right, Steve. Yeah, tell me why you picked AT and T, though. I think some folks listening were interested in how we landed on AT and T when I expressed that I like animals. And <laughs> well, so that one was, I guess, that was more of like my personal pick. Yeah. I, so AT and T, for those of you who don't know, I mean, all of you know that they're a cell phone company, right? That's a big part of their business. Mm -hmm. So they're actually splitting up their business. You may have heard. They may not have heard the news a couple months ago that they have an agreement with Discovery, which is another media company. They own Discovery Channel, TLC, HGTV, a lot of those reality, you know, home, nature yeah, channels yeah. and shows, right? Um, so they're like really big in unscripted content, meaning like reality TV, right? They're, and, and they launched Discovery, launched Discovery Plus, their own streaming app. Mm. last six months ago i don't know somewhere around there and it's been doing pretty well like they've got quite a few subscribers and um but anyway at&t got with discovery and said hey why don't we merge at&t's media assets so if you don't know at&t bought time warner a few years ago maybe three years ago um you know they own dc comics they own a bunch of you mm. know any time warner movie like matrix that's coming out that's a yeah. Warner Brothers movie. So they have a lot of media assets. They also own CNN, TBS, TNT. So they own some cable channels. Um, so they're merging with Discovery. So that's, really, that's really interesting real quick. I just have to like say this before I forget. That's really interesting because there's, there's like all these steps I guess you can take, right? So if your interests are like, I love movies, right? But I wouldn't have thought I love movies that equates to like, maybe look at AT&T. So where can you find real quick, like the information about the different companies like that? Because I, I just thought it was a phone company. Yeah. I mean, you can read summaries on a lot like Yahoo Finance will have like a description of each company. Okay. Um, pretty much any stock website, you know, you can find a basic description. The long answer is you can go to a 10k form 10k it's a SEC filing they're supposed to describe their business and all the different segments of their business and what they do. So, but a lot of it's just me following different stocks over the years. I just kind of know what, you know, so actually I, I had an investment in time Warner and they got bought by AT&T three years ago. And that was a successful investment. I had some options on time Warner and it was yeah. a good deal for me when they got acquired. Um, <clears throat> but it seems like it could really pay off then to like put in some time in understanding and learning about different companies because if your basic average person doesn't know that AT&T does all these other things you would have a leg up having that knowledge yeah and that's kind of the cool thing like yeah. just by following the market and different business transactions and what's going on like you can yeah you might be able to see certain opportunities when they present themselves so here yeah. they have an agreement with discovery which owns TLC HGTV discovery channel they're the biggest unscripted content uh, media company. And they've got Discovery Plus streaming uh, application that came out six months ago. They have several million subscribers already. Uh, Time Warner also, for those of you who don't know, they, they own HBO. So AT&T owns Time Warner. Time Warner, part of Time Warner is HBO. So all the HBO content, um, yeah. movies and shows and everything like that. And their stream, HBO streaming app. Um, which has mm -hmm. several million subscribers. So they think kind of at the end, once they merge these two companies, they could have about a hundred million global subscribers, streaming subscribers. To put that into context, Netflix has a roughly about 230, 230 million maybe. And Disney Plus is probably like 160 or something like that, or 130, I don't know. So they will be like the number three streaming player yeah. after this merger. So that was kind of a big reason for buying at and stock. Um, the stock price didn't really react. It actually went down after they announced that, um, which is interesting. I think it's just people don't want to wait because you just have to wait a year for these deals to go through. And it's just a lot of waiting and nothing's going to really happen to the stock price for them. That's why another reason why I chose those long dated options, because the deal's not going to close probably till next summer. Okay. That makes a ton of yeah. sense then. Yeah. Okay. But Anyway, so so it's got a good story behind. It. It's got a catalyst. When this merger goes through, I think the market will reevaluate both parts of the company and say, okay, we've got the cell phone company that's going to be its own thing, 
And then we've got this new media company. And if you're a shareholder, you're going to get pieces of, I mean, you're going to own both in the end when they split. Mm -hmm. So um, I've, I've read a lot of things. I think it's going to be like, it, it's probably worth like $40 now, the combined company with sit trading at 27. So, so how did you like, as you, as you know, all this stuff about AT&T kind of what, what checked off in what category of those four M's we talked about. So meaning obviously uh, now that I know it's like matrix and movies and <laughs> all and like reality TV. I mean, if anyone knows me, come on. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, for me, that actually checks the box there and for you, but okay, what about yeah. the other? Three? So moat is the second one. Um, meaning like, is it insulated from competition? I think so because the content media content is hard to come by. Like you have to spend yeah. billions to create movies and shows and have a huge library. They're already going to start with, I think they said they will have sure. more hours of content than Netflix and Disney plus combined when they wow. come out of the gates next year as a combined company. And so that's pretty powerful. I, it would take somebody a lot of years and money to catch up as far as content goes. And in the streaming wars, it's probably only going to be like three, maybe four players in the, at the end of the day, they'll probably be one of those. Yeah. Right. And then on their cell phone business side, they've got a big moat because it's very hard to start a cell phone company. You've got to get the towers and the spectrum and there's licenses and all that. So there's, right. that's why there's only yeah. like T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. And that's it. It hasn't been in new ones. Yeah. So pretty insulated mm -hmm. from competition there. Um, the, the third cricket. M. Where's Cricket? They're not even, I mean, I think Cricket's like, it might even be a subsidiary of one of these others. Oh. They buy spectrum from one of these companies. Oh. Anyway. Um, and I'm trying to go really fast because I know we're we're coming uh, up to time. But the third M, which is management, um, the the CEO of Discovery, I think it uh, was a Zaslov. What's his first name? I don't know. I I don't think management's super great. Other than there's this guy named John Malone who is this media mogul he's involved because he's like one of the biggest shareholders of discovery. And the rumor is that he hmm. helped put this deal together. And when he does a deal, it's usually it, historically, it's always been very good for the shareholders. Um, so jo John Malone, he's okay. like this well-known guy in the media industry. He's done a lot of media deals. Um, he it was like called the cable King. He's like this Texas guy who's like a cowboy. And there's a book on him, by the way. Anyway, um, so I think he's got pretty good management. Guy, but. Yeah. Uh, and then the last M, margin of safety, that's just about valuation. I think yeah. at this price, you know, it's um, if you do a sum of the parts analysis, like you look at the cell phone business, you look at this media business, that's where I've, I've looked at different um, articles on like Seeking Alpha where people kind of crunch the numbers and look at it, th you know, three different ways. And um, people are concluding like, yeah, like really, I think this is worth probably like 40 bucks today. And that's not counting, you know, in the future, it's going to have built up cash that's bringing in the door every year. Right. So um, I think it's got a pretty good margin of safety, even if we're off and it's really 35, we're still be in positive territory. Right. Okay. That's awesome. That really makes a lot of sense. Again, we are not telling everyone to go out and buy AT&T. However, that would just help me. So no, I'm just kidding. We're really not. <laughs> um, we are just breaking down with real life picks and stocks in real time, why we are making these decisions so that you can go through the process of using the four M's on, on stocks that speak to you. Um, we wanted to end, actually, we'll probably start, I think most podcasts start or end. Um, with a quick update too, because Steven's been busy buying up some stocks and options um, since last podcast. We're not only in with AT&T. So he's just going to spend a minute or two here uh, and show you or discuss a couple of those picks real quick. So um, you can see where that portfolio is kind of at right now. All right. So I'm, I'm sharing my... Um... TD Ameritrade, well, this is Thinkorswim app on my phone because I feel like it gives it a little bit of a better uh, view than what's in the uh, desktop application. I'm getting a little bit of an echo, so I got to cover my speaker. 
can't, I can't turn down the volume on my phone. <laughs> anyway, technical difficulties. Hopefully there's not much of an echo uh, on your end. Glad you don't have AT&T phone. I bet that uh, it would work a lot better. I don't. That's mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our AT&T position, by the way. You can see we're up $32 so far. Yeah. I don't know if you can see my mouse, so maybe that's, I shouldn't even bother moving the mouse. The third one down is AT&T. Um, if you look, I also bought some discovery shares. Mm. We're actually a position. That's an option position. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. It's not just a call. It's called a spread, which we'll get into later. Okay. So the upside is limited, but also we've limited the downside more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, some of these other ones, I just bought shares, honestly, in some other companies that look cheap because you were not authorized for options for about a day there. And so oh, I bought right. some shares just when the market was down. So yes. I bought some different gaming companies like uh, Electronic Arts, Take-Two, hmm. Activision. These are video game companies. They kind of went down quite a bit. And I kind of, fortu uh, is that fortuitously? Is that a word? <laughs> I fortuitously my, my bought system. at like the bottom of this latest downturn for these gaming stocks. Um, some other positions you may have heard of companies like Rocket Mortgage. This has been down a lot. This has been a real dog this year. Um, I'm doing kind of an insurance company trade we talked about briefly last time. We won't get into the details, but this deals with this relates to put options. So I'm using put options to do this insurance company type trade here, um, as well as with Jumia down here. That's an insurance company trade. Jumia is the Amazon of Africa. Oh, if you think Africa is going to take off, Jumia is the number one e commerce player there. Wow. But their stock has struggled. Um, okay. I'm just hoping that it doesn't go down further. If it doesn't go down further, we make money because it's an insurance company trade. We're just nice. need to stay above a certain level. Awesome. That, that's it for today. Um, we can get into some of these other positions later when we have more time, but that's the portfolio. At least I think we're barely in positive territory even after this downturn today. Uh, yeah. But that's just the market. Yeah. That's just the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows that you kind of just have to get used to when you're when you start investing right right yeah no i'll take that on a on a red day and um i don't know if we've already said this but steve has invested about 6500 so far of the of the 50k so that's how how deep we are at this point and we'll continue to buy and share that with you all um again we'd love your feedback so please review us on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you listen. Um, like us if you like us. Subscribe. We would love um, to get your feedback and get more more hype. So, thanks again for listening to us, and we will bring you more episodes next week. Yep. See ya. Bye.